Hey there, Tarek Merryface here. I apologize for the audio on, uh, on my laptop without my microphone, but uh, I'm in this like this power study mode. And so I'd like to teach some of the things I'm re-remembering, like the tiny little details that I forget, right? Um, and so I wanted to use this opportunity to experiment teaching with Excaladraw. I've taught using Excaladraw when, uh, when teaching face-to-face -face or online, but I've never done it on a video. So I'd like to try that. Let me know what you think in the comments. Today, fuel planning. We're gonna keep it specific to jets, but I will try to point out a couple of things for prop airplanes. But it's only, I think there's only one thing I need to point out in terms of differences. Anyhow, here's Captain Bob. Captain Bob is the pilot. He's the pilot in command of this jet, and he's gonna go through the flight mentally, right? He, ahead of time. And he's gonna take into account everything that he needs to do and anything that he may end up doing and how much fuel that's going to take. So the first thing, Captain uh, Bob is sitting at the apron and it's a hot day maybe, so he might turn on the APU. So that's the first thing he's gonna take into account. That's not a legal requirement, but uh, Captain Bob is a safe pilot. Uh, but on top of that, he's going to have to taxi. So he's going to taxi from the stand all the way to the runway, to the holding point. And then when it's time to, when he gets a clearance, he's going to have to taxi and line up with the runway before he's ready for takeoff. Now this fuel, taxiing to the runway, that's called the taxi fuel. Now I'm adding APU on top of that in my personal calculations. The legal requirement though, is taxi fuel. And so Bob has taken into account taxi and APU fuel. However, it's not over. He's at the departure runway, he takes off, he flies along the flight plan route, and then he reaches the destination, he lands and comes to a stop before the, uh, the holding point. So at this point, he successfully landed that fuel from the takeoff roll to landing and stopping at the destination airport, that is what we call the trip fuel. So the amount of fuel required from takeoff to landing along the flight plan route. Now, Captain Bob is not an umpty. He thinks back of sort of, for example, when he's here, Maybe there are delays, loads of traffic coming in. Maybe there's a slot issue. Maybe the, he's not ready and then, it, and then all of a sudden he has to wait because there's some sort of no tap. Like whatever it is, there might be some delays. Or maybe when he's flying along, he's en route and all of a sudden he finds on the weather radar a massive thunderstorm, right? And so he's got to think, well, I can't fly through this thunderstorm, so I am going to have to fly around it, right? And that's going to take extra time, which is going to burn extra fuel. So what, what Captain Bob is thinking about is contingency plants. And so let's talk about contingency fuel. And when it comes to contingency fuel, it's actually relatively simple. We use 5% of trip, or, let's make this smaller writing, uh, of trip or 15 minutes um, of fuel. And this is going to be whichever is greatest. There's a way you can reduce this. You can reduce this down to 3% of trip if, and a big if, you have a suitable en route alternate, right? So if you have an en route alternate, which is suitable according to the regulations, and we won't cover this here, uh, you can reduce that 15 minutes or 5% of trip down to 3% of trip fuel. And that's what we call the contingency fuel. Now, that's great. However, Captain Bob is still thinking ahead of the game. He's planning for every eventuality. And he's thinking, well, what if I come down to minimums and just as I'm at minimums, like a, a vehicle comes onto the runway and flips over and crashes and closes the runway and I can no longer land at the destination airport. Well, I'm gonna have to go around and then find my way to the next airport, right? The destination alternate airport. So I'm gonna have to do a go around, fly the route, and then come and land 
at this destination alternate airport. So Captain Bob's going to think about how much fuel going from the go around to fully stopping at the destination alternate. So that's what we call the destination alternate fuel. So Captain Bob goes ahead and adds that into his calculations. Now, Captain Bob also knows that for safety, the regulation says that you must land with a minimum amount of fuel or the final reserve fuel. And that's this. Uh, for jet airplanes, it's 30 minutes of holding at 1,500 feet above the destination airports at the expected landing mass. So he's going to go ahead and calculate that and add that into the fuel calculations. That's what we call the final reserve. And so this is where there's a difference between prop and jet. Uh, it's 45 minutes for prop airplanes. And what I do not remember is whether it's um, of trip 45 minutes at cruise or 45 minutes at hold 1500 feet above the ground. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll look it up and then I'll post it uh, in the comments below unless someone beats me to it. That'd be great. <laughs> uh, so there you go, final reserve fuel. Uh, so that's great. However, uh, Captain Bob also needs to take into account other things, operational requirements, right? What if um, reading the instructions, the star, the approach that uh, uh, the in approach instructions coming into destination airport, airport, you have to descend much lower than anticipated. Say in a normal flight, he would descend here, uh, sort of around here, but because of the operational requirements, he needs to descend here. If he descends earlier, he's going to have to burn a lot more fuel, right? Or what if there is no suitable destination alternate and the airport is isolated? He then has to have a regulatory requirement to bring in additional fuel. All these sort of um, considerations are what we call additional fuel. And this is a legal requirement to take into account if there is any additional fuel. Coming into London Luton, for example, you descend a lot earlier, so you're going to need additional fuel. If you go to an isolated airport, you need, I believe it was two hours of cruise fuel. Um, uh, in addition to the normal, the normal fuels. And that's great. All right. So we have the taxi. We have the trip. We have the contingency. We have the destination alternate. We've got the final reserve. And we've taken into account the additional fuel. We are legal, right? This fuel right here. All this are the legal requirements. So this is the legal requirement. Captain Bob is safe, or should I say legal to go. But Captain Bob is an experienced pilot. He knows that things don't always go to plan. He might have experience with the destination airport. He might look at the weather and notice, in fact, yeah, there's some weather en route. There might be some weather in the vicinity of the destination airport, right? And there's a there's a chance that some of that some of that those thunderstorms, some of those that weather might end up temporarily being over the destination airport. And so, if you were to take the minimum regulatory requirement, and weather develops over the airport when he arrives, he would have no choice but to immediately go to the alternate right immediately because otherwise he'd land with less than the, the minimum reserve which would be illegal and so captain bob thinks well you know what? i'd be clever i might take an extra 30 minutes 45 minutes of fuel because that's roughly how long it takes for a thunderstorm to dissipate right and so if that happens i can then enter the hold and wait for that fuel of that that thunderstorm to dissipate and then I can do the approach and land. This is not a regulatory requirement. It's a discretionary amount of fuel. And we call this extra fuel. And so Captain Bob's going to use his experience and his knowledge to determine how much extra fuel, if any, he's going to take. And that's fuel planning. The, the, the basics, essentially, with the little nitties that I always forget, like these specific values and that kind of stuff. But uh, if you have any questions, please throw them below in the comments. If there's anything I missed out, 
open that discussion in the comments below because hey we're all learning here i'm tarek mayor i'll see you guys next time and happy flying